Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how you go ahead and schedule meetings and recurring meetings in Zoom. So make sure that you're logged in with the Chatham County Zoom. Um, the URL is up here at the top. Make sure that you're logged into chathamk12nc.zoom.us. Once you log in, it'll bring you to the screen that shows any meetings that you've already got set up and you can go ahead and set up any new meetings. So let's go ahead and click on schedule a new meeting. And that will bring you to a screen that has a lot of different options. So first, you're going to want to um, name your Zoom. So let's just call it library time. You can write a description. Fifth grade library time, let's call it. Down here in the when, you can um, set up the date of your first meeting when you want it to be um, by either typing it in this box or you can pick the calendar and that will help with that. You can set your time say it's 1 p.m. You can set the duration, so how long you think your meeting's going to last. It can go up to 24 hours. That would be quite a long meeting. Uh, the time zone is already set for our time zone um, here at Chatham County Schools. And then down here you can click if it's a recurring meeting. So if you're, say, um, setting your classes that are going to happen for the next month virtually, you might want to have them be daily meetings. You can set how often they were um, repeat. So if they're every other day, every three days, etc. And then you can set the end date um, either by the date or by the number of occurrences. So let's say you wanted to make sure that you've got Zoom meetings set up for your um, core classes until at least the end of um, the first four weeks of virtual schooling. You could go ahead and click um, September 11th. Um, you can decide whether or not you want to require registration. And those are the different options for that. I usually don't. Um, you can set a passcode for your specific Zoom meeting. Um, you can use the one that Zoom already automatically provides, or you can type in something else if you um, think that will be easier to remember for folks. You can set up a waiting room here. The waiting room um, basically just creates a little area that people who want to come into your Zoom have to wait until you let them come in. So if you want to control the flow of people coming in, um, if you don't want people to show up before you get there, that's a good way to kind of control who has access. It also is a way that you can prevent people that you don't want to come into the meeting from coming in. So it's a good security feature. Now we come to the video session. You can um, decide whether as the host, you want your video to be on or off when you first come in. I usually, if I'm hosting, put it on. Um, you can always turn it off later if you need to. For participants, so that would be, do you want your students coming in with video on or off? I usually select off. There's a variety of reasons why students may not want their um, homes to be on video to their, their classmates and to us as their teachers. So um, I usually leave it off. Students can decide if they want to put it on instead. Um, if they have slower, kind of slow internet, having the video off kind of stabilizes the video, the um, Zoom so that they don't get that like weird skipping and patching through. So another way that you can help students who uh, maybe have slow internet or no internet is allow people to call in on their phones. So just make sure that both is selected so that way people who want to join on their computers can and people who want to phone in can. And then you've got a few meeting options. So I always leave enable join before host off. I don't want people to come into my meeting um, before that I am there. I always leave this one on, mute participants upon entry. That way people can't come in talking um, and it just helps um, so that you don't kind of have a cacophony as everybody's coming in. And then if you want to use breakout rooms, um, I'll have a video about breakout rooms soon. You can pre-assign them or just assign them to people as they come in, and you can decide to record the meeting, which we're, um, I know core teachers are going to have to do, so I'll have one about that, but this is the option that you would select for that. Um, if you're gonna have a co-teacher in any of these meetings, you can add them here. So say I was going to co-teach a lesson with Ms. Melton, I would just add her email address there, and that would be that. She would um, be allowed to start meetings and be a host like I am. So once you have selected all of the settings for your meeting, you just go ahead and save. 
and it will automatically populate all of the meetings if you set it up as a recurring meeting. So you will um, probably want to post this to your learning management system so that students know. Um, to do that, you can copy the invitation and it will copy all of this information. And then you can go ahead and post it in Canvas or in Google Classroom um, and anywhere else you need to post it so that people know when your classes will be. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and I will be happy to answer them or figure out the answer if I don't know it. Thanks guys, bye.